Now I'd like to show you some ideas for working with bitstreams and text as well as setting up the specific pattern for the preamble. Let me begin by just taking a look at some techniques associated with going from a text to a bitstream. We know that each character gets translated into eight bits total. If we'd like to see a little bit more of our bitstream on the screen, select just one of the indicators in the array and then apply a different width and height to that value. And now you can stretch out the array and see more of what's going on. For our purposes, we do want to insert some framing bits. Let's check out the effect of this first by looking at framing bits as being a control that we can vary. And if you carefully study the before and after here, you can see how those framing bits are actually getting inserted. I'll just go ahead and change that to a constant now. Also, we need the start bit to be a false or low value. One more time, just take a look at the results there to confirm that it is behaving the way we expect. And then I'll convert that to a constant as well. So the way I tend to think about these messages as more of a horizontal appearance. It, it really doesn't matter, but it might be a little bit easier to see certain things here. Now once we've formed a bitstream, at some point you'll have a bitstream that you're trying to look at uh, and, and convert that bitstream back to text. So you need to make sure that you're using the same format in terms of the framing bit value and the fact that you are in fact using framing bits. And another thing that's really helpful at times is to see the actual hexadecimal display corresponding to your bitstream, and that's easily accomplished. Try adding just a few more characters, and, and sure enough, there you see all the hex characters associated with that original text. Well, at this time, I want to turn, turn our attention to the notion of inserting some bits associated with the preamble. There's two ways to do this. I'll introduce the first method based on setting up the bitstream as a constant. Bitstreams being Boolean arrays, we can certainly define an array constant. Let me expose some more values here. And then simply click. We probably want alternating if we're setting up the beginning of the preamble. We see whatever pattern you're interested in forming here. I'm not trying to pay attention to it too hard here. Set up whatever pattern is necessary for your overall preamble. And then we need to attach that to the beginning of our message bitstream. Build array comes in handy at this point.
build array allows us to join these two one-dimensional arrays together and the particular connection I'm showing here ensures that the preamble goes first and the message goes second. We have a still lingering issue here with that connection. Let's just make sure I haven't done something strange. Well, sure enough, there's some, some problem here. Let's check this out in a little more detail. It says we've got a mismatch in the dimension of the arrays. Well, turns out that if you don't do an extra step on build array, you actually, in fact, in this case, take two one-dimensional arrays and generate a 2D array. Selecting the concatenate inputs option on that is critical. And I'm interested now in, in seeing how this shows up, especially in the bitstream. We can see it in the hexadecimal display. Let me move the bitstream indicator to the other side of our build array uh, device. Okay, there we can see the uh, beginnings of that preamble showing up here. One more method that I'd like to show you. You may find this a little bit more convenient to work with. The concatenation can happen at the text end also. If you find that your preamble needs to be somewhat long and it's a lot easier to specify as hexadecimal, then this is definitely the way to go. Now you do have to recognize that when you specify the, the preamble pattern using characters, you have to remember that they also pass through that, that framing mechanism, so that, that's something you have to think about. Now initially, the constant is simply set up to be a traditional ASCII display. Let me show, show you how this looks. All right, there's the howdy showing up. Again, do a right click on your constant and select hex display. And you can edit on this just like you did as if it was the ASCII version. So for example, in this case, I wanted to change that to hexadecimal FF and I just simply type that in. And there we see the long burst of ones at the beginning of the message. There's the FF showing up in our hex display too. So other possibilities you might investigate would be hex patterns that you know translate into alternating one zero patterns. For example, AA would do that, as well as five five. And of course you can make as many uh, characters as you like for that hex constant. So if you need the preamble to be longer or you want to do things associated with the alternating one zeros pat pattern and then a constant, you can just go ahead and put all of that in there. Again, bear in mind that with this second technique, it it always passes through that that uh, bitstream from text sub VI, and so that means that it's always adding the one zero framing bits. So as long as you bear that one in mind, you'll be in good shape.